My grandmother lived a vibrant and active life until her retirement last year. After her retirement, she began to feel isolated, lonely, and depressed. My mother, her siblings, and I rallied together to make sure that she would continue to live an active life into her retirement years. She's seen here reading to a group of kindergartners and also exercising in a wellness class. My grandmother is a part of a growing aging population. In 2011, baby boomers turned 65 years old and comprise 77 million of the U.S. population. Americans are living longer. The average American lifespan is 79 years old, but not necessarily healthier. In our research, we found that seniors want to continue to live a vibrant, active life, but they don't have the resources to find some of these activities. Even with the rollout of the Affordable Care Act, which mandated coverage for these wells, for some wellness services, because of poor education and lack of advertising, seniors still did not know their wellness options. We at Your Health Concierge will be a direct service and coordinating hub for seniors 55 and older starting in the Washington, D.C. area. We would like to expand nationally. Our services aligned with the national and international movement to age friendly in place. We will provide wellness services including physical activities, socializing, and nutrition. We will be the intermediaries between the clients and our service providers. This is our team. We are four women entrepreneurs with over 50 years of experience in public health and medicine. This is Doris Bryant. She's a registered nurse. This is Shakita Jenkins. She's a Master of Public Health graduate in community-oriented primary care here at GW. This is Dr. Carolyn Sparks, a licensed psychologist and director of health promotion here at GW. And I'm Christian Brewer. I also am a student in the Masters of Public Health program here at GW, but I have over 10 years of experience as a licensed massage therapist and independent wellness contractor. This idea came about because Doris and Dr. Sparks wanted to expand their work with this population. With our research, they saw that there was a need, a gap, if you will, and they wanted to fill it. So, because Chiquita and I were stellar students in Dr. Sparks' health promotion and aging class, she decided to recruit us to round out the team. This is our advisory board filled with professionals from the health management field, community service, and programs for seniors, as well as experts in the legal department and finance. Our focus is on those citizens, 55 and above, who are going into a new phase of their lives. We've divided this very large group into three smaller groups, but I will grant you there's overlap. The first group is active and eager to stay that way. They're right in there having fun and want to stay that way. The second group is managing chronic disease. Their goal is to achieve the best possible standard of living that they can and maintain that. The third group is going through major life transitions. This can involve retirement, loss of a, sig of a significant other, empty nest syndrome, often there's a decrease in expendable income, uh, maybe they move to a new geographic location. Any of these things can result in a decrease in social interaction, a decrease in physical activity, consequent increase in depression and isolation. We've learned from our research that this group often will not exercise alone. They very often don't know what wellness services are available to them. They don't want to be referred to as old. They don't want the 
negative connotations that our society provides to that, and they want value for their money. Our group has the experience, education, empathy, and desire to help this population live life to the fullest. So this is how we're going to do it. We'll be providing direct services. We'll do wellness workshops and uh, do wellness interviews and assessments. Through these contacts, we will connect to our service providers. We'll be paid a fee, and we will in turn pay the providers. We've modeled our business based on successful national networking companies. Now, we're well aware of the fact that in order to serve the low-income population, we're going to need government contracts. And toward that end, we have been in touch with federal, state, and local uh, government representatives, as well as Medicare and Medicaid. Upon receiving those contracts, we will then be able to provide the services to the low-income segment of this population. So according to a recent uh, Pew Research Institute study, 60% of seniors are actually using the internet and can be contacted through web technology. So we're confident that we can use internet as a viable form of marketing to reach seniors. However, we are aware that 40% are not yet internet connected, and for this reason we will use more traditional forms of media. So that includes printing in newspapers, brochures, advertisements and flyers and one-on-one -on -one interaction in places frequented by this population. That includes libraries, doctor's offices, religious centers, and senior living facilities. And we would connect with our service providers through a web-based system. Now, I understand that some of these farms seem dated and that you can probably identify other people in the senior wellness market that are providing these services. However, we have a, a considerable competitive advantage. Our core customer value is that seniors should receive tailored wellness services at reasonable prices, and they shouldn't only be, be available to people of wealth. Our core business value is that our service providers should be paid at a rate that is in line with their professional training. And what we find is that with independent providers, Medicare, Medicaid, affordable care organizations, health maintenance organizations, um, and some community wellness clinics, oftentimes all of these desired areas are not reached. And that is, what we're going to, that is where we're going to come into an uncoordinated and fragmented market and coordinate, and, um, coordinate those services for our clientele. And this is what makes us unique. And so our service provider network will actually link residents or link um, our clientele to services specific to them within a specific geographic area of their home. We're different because we're actually going to pay our service providers according to their professional training. And then we're better because we have the actual expertise, the experience, and the education to actually, again, coordinate a very uh, severely fragmented market. Our revenue projections show in different colors our sources of revenue. And in the first year, as we begin, we will rely on workshops, events, and direct services to individual clients. And as time passes, by the end of 2015, we expect to have our first couple of contracts uh, and expand our provider network to at least 100 providers. And then as we go through 2016 and 17, more and more of our revenue will be from the contracts and from the provider network and our proprietary database. Um, this shows our three-year financial projections. We expect by the end of three years to reach $500,000. Um, and uh, you can see in the red line where our expenses um, begin to diverge um, and we begin to make money. Um, and then our profit um, is shown by mid-2016, we will become profitable and, and go up from there. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. So what we're doing to raise money to survive in the first year, we're asking you for top prize for $35,000, and here's what we would do with it. We are all investing what we can afford to invest ourselves, and we have friends and colleagues who have expressed an interest and some commitment to investing as well. 
Well, as you can see, we're starting lean, but we have a vision of becoming a national coordinating hub for wellness services for this population of people who are 55 and older and want to continue to live an active life. With your help and your investment, we want to help seniors live well. Thank you. Thank you. There's a lot of motion in the ocean here in this area. There's clearly a need. Mm -hmm. um, how do you relate to things like the village movement, to NORCs, to uh, the MedStar um, medical house call program, and to things like Iona House? Mm -hmm. These are all local things. Right. Well, there are local. Um, we have spoken to a few of them, and some of the services that we would like to provide, they do not provide. And in speaking with the D.C. Office of Aging that also has six senior centers, they would like people like us to come in and procure those contracts so that we can provide services that they do not. And we're mainly focusing on wellness, so not just like um, sick individuals, but keeping them well. So the focus on wellness is sort of your differentiation? Mm -hmm. yes, yes. yes. And what's yes. some of the specific programs that you guys would provide I mean, to some of those six centers that you talked about? Okay, well, uh, behavioral management interviewing. So it's a motivational interviewing process. Well, let's say if you would like to lose weight or become more active in an exercise class or if you want to deal with your isolation uh, because a lot of your friends have passed away, we would help connect you with other seniors who maybe want to dine in a group or we would talk one-on-one -on -one with you about the steps you can take to lose weight or become more active. That would be a part of our wellness assessment, and then we would connect you with our service providers if the four of us with our expertise cannot provide that service directly. Um, one of the members of our advisory board is the director, is the chair of exercise science and nutrition at GW, and those graduate students are a potential source of um, providers, and certainly after they graduate would be a source of providers for us. Um, but we don't expect to have, from talking with potential providers, they're eager to join something like this because they're just on their own trying to start small businesses. Mm -hmm. You piqued my interest in talking about your research. So mm -hmm. tell me more about what this research told you about what you've decided to do. Okay. Well, uh, Dr. Sparks has spearheaded this senior fitness assessment research to basically find out how fit seniors are because, as I said, we are all are, um, aging and we're living longer. So we found that some of these seniors, they want to dance, they want to go even to the movies, but they don't have friends or family members to accompany them. They may know about an exercise class or a dance class, but they're timid because, again, they feel lonely and isolated. So we decided if we could coordinate all of these services for seniors we know, seniors that you know we will know, <laughs> that you know that gap will be filled. Uh, can Go ahead. I don't want. I, uh, 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 your last poll here that you said uh, that you'd like to expand nationally. It, mm -hmm. it seems to me, frankly, that you're really focused on it being a local business, mm -hmm. at least for the next few years. Um, do you, I, I guess I have two parts to that question. One is you really want to expand nationally. Are you mm -hmm. happy it being a local business? And then secondly, looking at your numbers, um, it seems that you know, after two years, if you get to 500,000, uh, your profit is uh, about 150000 for the four of you. That was pre-paying yourselves, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what's driving you to do this? It's our passion. It's our passion. We all, like I said, have experience in public health and medicine. My personal passion, because I have a personal experience with this, and my grandmother, and we know that there is a need out there. And hopefully, when we expand nationally, we will be able to make more than 150000 or 500000 to not only pay ourselves, but pay providers, because that's another one of our core values. Me being a provider, I understand that sometimes you're not paid by other companies that's in line with your educational training. Are you happy keeping it a local business? Uh, we are, but we have plans to expand nationally because we don't think that this is only a problem in this area. We do believe it's a national problem. And one of our advisory board members lives in Columbus, Ohio, and she has a company similar to this that she's owned for 11 years. Okay. Part, part of your financial success assumes getting government 
engagement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you know about those contracts and what sort of steps? Can you hit the high notes on yeah. what Dr. you know Spons about it and what would it entail? We know that it takes a long time to get these contracts. <laughs> and so that's why we're in, in year one. In year one, we're really focused on how we're going to keep the business going. And that's through the workshops and the village movement. Um, we'll, we'll reach out to all of those villages through workshops and events. And then um, uh, as we work on getting the contracts, the first thing we're going to do is apply for a, Medicaid no a Medicare number because then that guarantees our Medicaid number. And then we can start moving into senior recreation facilities and that sort of thing. So we're not, pr we're, we're not planning to get there until the very end of 2015. And how confident are you that you can do that? It seems like a very arcane sort of exp experience. Um, no, because we've got advisory group. Uh, we've got members on the advisory board that have a long history of working in senior care. Um, and so do I. I mean, I've been running nonprofits for 30 years. And so I understand startup issues. And it'll take us about three years to really begin to break even and get ahead. So I'm not concerned about that. The beauty of that is I already have a job. It's these three that don't. <laughs> um, and so, um, so even the 156000 assumes that we're paying them by that time. Uh, that's, that's profit. That's not just, that's what's left over after they're paid. And we don't anticipate paying dividends for the first few years, of course. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to us more about your partnerships? Uh, do you have partnerships with like AARP and all the national organizations that deal in the space? We don't yet, but we certainly hope to, and we hope to win the AARP award uh, mm -hmm. for this. Um, but yes, we will be trying to establish partnerships, including partnerships with some of the villages. I mean, we've talked to different people in the village movement. so. I'm hoping that that will result in some partnerships. But our partnerships will also be, in addition to the contracts, our partnerships would be with our providers. Um, we've already got a list of providers going uh, that would love to do this as soon as we start up. Um, and so I think a lot of our partners will be people who are like sole providers for their own particular niche. Um, Feldenkrais instructors, uh, yoga instructors, that sort of thing. Water aerobics, we discovered seniors love water aerobics. Mm -hmm. So we're also hoping that even some of the hotels now provide um, membership passes to their swimming pools during the days and that we could do some water aerobics classes and put seniors in a, in a nice environment, you know, while they go to a class or have lunch together later while we focus on good nutrition and healthy eating. So we've got some ideas about how to go about doing this. Okay. So if you were to come up with a tagline that defines what you do and what you do uniquely, what would it be? Helping Our, seniors to live well. So <laughs> how would that be distinctive from others who might say, we do the same? They don't do it for wellness. They do it for illness, but they don't do it for wellness. We think this is the time to enter the so wellness I like the, I like the second one better, by the way. Which one? We do it for, for wellness, not for we illness. For mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Thank we you. do it for wellness. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.